Hello YouTube and welcome to another episode of The Cloudy Vape. In this video we're going to be talking about the Bellis Tank by UD or the Bellis Tank, however you want to say it. Bellis, B-L-L-U-S, Bellis. So uh, this is kind of an interesting uh, RTA. I did say tank, but um, it is a RTA. So it has your uh, dual uh, dual build deck, dual posts. You know, it's not like your uh, three post or four post. It's just like the Goliath, uh, the Goliath version one and two. So that's kind of the build. Um, it uh, it's just interesting because it just automatically feeds this juice down and it uh, wicks really well. And you have decent size airflow on the sides. You also have top filling option right up top. Boom, like that and you have your top filling section. So it's right there and it seals off with a little grommet. So that goes down like that. Uh, but let's have a little vape, dive down, check it out, and then talk about the pros and the cons. So let's have a little vape. So, a lot of vapor production. This is a 0.3 ohm build at about 61 watts, and uh, it's a dual coil using 24 gauge cantal. So uh, yeah, that is what that is. Let's dive down and check it out. All right, so here is the Bellas tank by UD. Let's have a little look at it. Not too bad, not too bad. Very nice packaging, it says Bellas. On the back, it says a little bit of stuff. It says tank system, dripper flavor, 100% no leak design. It says that, but I have had a little leak, so I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but it says 100% no leak design. Uh, I just was wicking it wrong then. Uh, side airflow intake, 32 air holes, 16 on each side. Great vapor, uh, better taste, top filling design, uh, 5 mil juice capacity. All right, so it does break apart in quite a few sections. Uh, you do have a little bit of goodies, just like UD normally does. Um, so let's look at our goodies. Um, as far as in here, now these are going to be O-rings. Um, this is for your uh, your actual top fill to replace the top fill section. You have O-rings. You have uh, some coils. You actually have a little uh, adapter that goes down in, just like the Goblin. If you see right there, just like the Goblin uh, Mini and the Goliath version two. So if you want to adapt it to a single coil uh, deck, you can, um, but automatically it's gonna come with a dual coil deck. Uh, this is some organic cotton, some UD organic cotton in there. You also have an extra uh, glass tank, a decent sized glass tank in there, and that is gonna be all of your goodies. So I'm gonna set the goodies aside. Let's pull out the tank, bust it apart. Um, as far as an actual build, I'll have a separate build video on this one. Uh, it's basically the same setup as the Goliath version two or the Goliath version one. It is a little bit bigger deck than the Goliath version one, but if you know how to build on a Goliath, uh, you know how to build on this. If you know how to build on a two post RTA or a you know two post RDA, you pretty much know how to build on this. The, the trick on this is wicking, but because the wicking is so easy on this, you should have no issues. You throw a dual coil in there and it should work pretty well. So right away, there's your top fill section. Uh, you can pop it off. There's that seal and it does come with an extra seal. So you can screw that down in. It has rifling all the way down the chimney and on the drip tip, the rifling on the inside. If you see, it's really hard to see because the light, come on. All right, but as you can see in there, a little bit of rifling in the actual center. It's hard to see because it's so dark, but the rifling goes all the way down into the deck. So that's a new thing UD does. Now, as far as the size, I would say it's almost exactly the same size as the Goliath version 2. Like in height, it fills it fills about the same size in height. Uh, and they and it is also a 22 millimeter um uh, RTA. So this is an RTA. If I said RDA, uh, please forgive me. So this is designed and manufactured by UD Tech. And then it says UD and it looks like a gold plating, a gold plating pin at the very bottom. So that's what that looks like. Um, now, okay, here's the switch up with this. So you have a drip tip, you have your 
little top section that is for top filling and it also seals off you have your two about three millimeter uh, holes that go straight into the deck you have your chimney with the rifling going on uh, so that is a quick fill top section popping this apart now this little bottom part this is where it all changes up this is one of the first ones I've seen do this so this is like your ring that seals your deck on all right so look at that it just pops off just like that kind of interesting I know kind of interesting kind of weird um, so essentially it clips in like that this ring right here seals off the the uh, the deck so you can then seal it completely and let juice flow into it so that is all you have to do unscrew this little ring right here it has some threading on it pop this deck off and if you look inside it's basically a little chimney and then on the outside of it you have your airflow uh, and your juice flow so if you see those big Cylon slits on either side that is going to be your juice flow so that's how that's how fast the juice can flow down in there these are huge huge Cylon uh, juice flow coming down uh, and then your airflow is separate uh, it is separate from the uh, the actual um, uh, what is it called separate from the actual juice flow so a lot like the aromamizer RDTA but basically you see here is your airflow and if you look down the juice flow is going to be on the two sides let me grab my screwdriver uh, airflow is separated completely separated from the juice flow so you're not going to have uh, you know juice when you fill it do it now the only time you'll ever have uh, you will actually ever have leaking is if you don't wick it correctly and if you just keep filling and you keep putting pressure uh, filling it down like that you might get a little bit of juice come up from the deck and a little bit of juice might come out the sides of the juice flow or the airflow rather um, but yeah essentially that is you know all of it's in one piece I can I don't believe I can take this apart can I yeah I probably can it's probably just gonna be really tight there we go so here is your other sections so there is your uh, other section you have your top chimney section you have a couple o-rings to seal off that uh, a couple o-rings to seal off that glass and that is that so not too bad there you also have an o-ring down there to seal off the glass so it's a uh, you know not that many pieces but it's nice that you can take it apart especially that it's an RTA so there we go now you can see down in there so those big slits on the side are your juice flow the center is your chimney and then your airflow is going to be on the edge right there so it is separated like I said now your deck um, let's look at your deck your deck is just going to be a two post design there you go two post design that little hole right there doesn't go all the way through it's just kind of a uh, an indentation so you can put your single coil block on there uh, in case you want to block it off at least that's what I believe it's to block it off um, so that is something that you can do it will also block off the juice flow so there is your juice flow all the way around it's pretty uh, pretty remarkable it just looks like a larger version of the Goliath version 1 it kind of just looks like the Goliath version 2 deck so you do have a uh, Phillips head screws uh, dual post a uh, couple o-rings to seal that off now there is a little indentation right there if you see there's an indentation right there and an indentation right there and so that indentation lines up with these little indentations right on the edge if you see right there these indentations so what you do is you take you find that once you build it line up that indentation right there push it down and then this ring now that indentation is there screw it down and that o-ring and everything will seal that off completely and then what you have is you have a completely sealed off deck juice coming down from the top airflow coming out from the sides so instead of a bottom fed RTA you're actually having it uh, fed from the side just like an RDA so kind of like your RDTA by aromamizer that same kind of function straight down juice coming straight down filling up a reservoir and then you have airflow coming from the sides just like an RDA so that is uh, you know that's that 
Now just make sure you, before you put this little sleeve on like I did, make sure to put your airflow back on. Now as far as airflow, let me look at this a little bit closer. It's not, it's not super big airflow if you can see, but it is on both sides. Um, I would say probably three or four millimeters wide and about uh, two millimeters in height. Uh, so two uh, Cylon airflows. Now you have this little uh, honeycomb uh, kind of ring. It's supposed to be a honeycomb ring, 16 holes on each side. Uh, a little bit of marking, it says Bellis. And then the cool thing is this little marker right here. And let me put it back together and I'll explain to you what that does. So as far as your airflow adjustment, you can close it off completely just like that, twisting it and it does adjust the other side. Or you can slightly close it off halfway, just get some of that honeycomb airflow going in if you want. And I do apologize if it looks extremely bright. Uh, it's just super dark right now. So I'm needing to bump up the uh, the ISO on my camera to uh, get the actual uh, image to see. Just so you can see this. I don't really care that I look like I'm extremely pale like a vampire. Um, let me put it all back together real quick. All right, so let's real quickly talk about the airflow control on here, and that's just going to wrap up this uh, wrap up this review. So this is your airflow control. Uh, this little ring that I showed you, you can put on and take off. Um, it basically freely spins. Now it's hard to see inside of the honeycomb to see where the actual airflow is. So what they did was they created a little marking system, kind of like. Uh, the Goliath had the heartbeat, but this is just a little circle. If you see right there, you just have a little circle. So you take that circle and then you find the actual circle on the top section, this little top area above it, and you just line it up. And what happens is when you line that up, you see right there, so that's all lined up nice and straight. Now your airflow is completely centered right there and completely centered right there. So you almost don't even have to look at this. Uh, what it's kind of showing you is the opening of it, right? So it's completely opened on the center. Now you can just look at this and just twist it just a little bit like that or just twist it just a little bit like that. You don't even have to look at the side airflows. You just pay attention to this twist it a little bit, pay attention, you know, there, and uh, and then it'll adjust as needed. Now, if you really want to, you can get a flashlight, shine in there, and adjust it as needed, but uh, the when I've been using it, I've been using it wide open, and if I did want to close it off, I just look at this little indentation, this little marker, and I adjust it as is. So it's kind of cool that they created that, because if not, it would have been really hard to adjust this and know when it's open or when it's closed. So, uh, yeah, that is the... Um, that is the Bellis by UD. Um, and uh, let's go back up to FaceTime and talk about it just a little bit more. So let's talk about the pros and the cons. So as far as pros and cons, uh, I would say that the pros are the build deck is easy, easy, easy peasy to build on. I love dual post setups. Uh, two post setups are just super easy to build on. At least that's my opinion. That's what I enjoy and it's easy to build on for me. Um, you have a decent size airflow and it is adjustable so it does accommodate uh, the majority of wattages you know from anywhere from 20 watts all the way up to uh, 80 watts 90 watts whatever you want to do um, and also a decent size actual build deck as you saw up close it's not going to be the biggest it's not like an RDA but it is decent for an RTA it definitely fits you know 2.5 millimeter coils uh, even three mil three millimeter coils depending on how you build it so that is very nice as far as wicking it keeps up with max vg high viscosity and it is definitely a vapor production device but also has very good flavor at least that's it that you know that's my opinion it definitely has very good flavor uh for what i enjoy and the wattage that i vape at um, the only issues that I've really run into as far as cons, I know if I have a really large build in there, something that uh, leaves very minimal room on the deck, so I kind of, um, I'm almost just laying the cotton down for a high VG juice. Um, you know, if you don't really wick it very well, there is a chance while you're top filling, once you screw down on the top and you start put, pressurizing that tank, you're going to get a little bit of juice coming up from the deck and it will come out the airflow holes if you tilt it. Uh, you know, that's just one thing to think about uh, how much uh, cotton you actually put in that deck uh, and also what viscosity you're using. So I've had that happen. I just want to mention that. But again, 
that was because I just laid the cotton right on top of the juice flow channels because I wanted it to wick really fast with some high VG. Uh, I did rebuild it and I put the cotton down into the channels a little bit more, just feathered it down to the channels and I was using like a 60, uh, 60, 40 it was, or it was a 70, 30, I can't remember. And I didn't have any issues with wicking and I didn't have any flooding issues. So uh, if your type of wicking is going to be something that is just going to lay that cotton right on top of the juice flow channels and you want a very high viscosity to go in there, there is a chance for minor leaking, just a little bit of residue on the airflow. So that is just something to mention. Um, so that was definitely be a con. But besides that, besides that one incident I had, since then I never really had an issue. And it was the initial fill. So it was right before the cotton, uh, before the cotton was actually broken in very well, uh, it did have that leak. So after I vaped on it for a while, I was filling it up with no issues. So again, I'm going into a lot of detail. I just wanted to let you know the actual issues that I did have with this. But as far as the build quality, uh, you know, top notch. UD does a very good job, very decent job machining it. Everything is very clean. Everything, uh, you know, no machine oil on the beginning, at the beginning of using it. And uh, it's cool that it comes with, you know, extra O-rings and just, uh, you know, extra glass and different things like that. But um, I really enjoy this as it's just a very simplistic RTA, something that you can build, fill up fast and use and rebuild very fast also. So um, my personal opinion, I would give this a thumbs up uh, for my style of vaping and what I enjoy. So if you like to rebuild RTAs a lot, if you like something that can accommodate max VG and has a decent amount of airflow, I would definitely recommend picking one of these up if that is you know what you're into. So that is my thoughts on it. And if you have any more questions or if you want me to elaborate on anything I said about this tank, definitely look in the, the description box below. I'll update a few things if I have any more problems or just ask below in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So uh, that's going to wrap it up and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please like it. And if you like my videos in general, please subscribe and as always stay classy and keep vaping.